Hello and welcome to a brand new series of sustainable energy. I'm Ashley House. And I'm Afia Adam and we are your guides as we investigate how we can use energy more effectively for ourselves, for the ecosystem and the entire planet. In this series, we'll look at the technology, the sustainability, the viability and the long-term future of the ways in which we source energy. Now, there are numerous different sources of sustainable energy, from wind turbines to solar panels to geothermal energy to biomass. But in this episode, we're going to be looking at one we've been using for thousands of years, hydropower. As you know, Afia, hydro means water. Add the word power and you have the oldest source of renewable energy. Yes, if you think about it, it's a remarkably simple and effective way of producing power. Amazingly, archaeologists believe that a basic method of hydropower was used in China as far back as 200 BC. But fast forward to now and it's become the world's largest source of renewable power, improving energy sustainability and climate change mitigation. Now, Afira, I know you've been looking at stories from around the world, so what have we got to look forward to? Coming up in this episode, it doesn't get much bigger than this. We travel to Brazil to visit the world's largest generator of renewable energy. Plus, proving small can be beautiful as well, we visit Nepal to find out how micro hydropower plants are changing lives for the better. We also have access to the beating heart of technology itself, we visit one of the oldest water turbine makers in the world. And finally, what does the future hold? We visit one of the top research facilities into dam design and construction to find out how its work could help save lives. Well, I can't wait to see all of that. In the meantime, I went to Switzerland to talk to a leading expert in the hydroelectric field. But just how important is water to our daily energy needs? Well, hydropower supplies about 20% of the world's electricity, a share that's remained stable since the 1990s. In terms of renewable power, it provides 85% of global renewable electricity. The costs of power production from hydropower can vary widely depending on the project, but are usually around $50 to $100 per megawatt hour. People often argue that sustainable energy is too small to be meaningful and cannot provide the power needed for big energy users and for industry. But hydropower can be a solid rebuttal to that argument. We visit a plant that is the world's largest generator of renewable clean energy and one of vital national importance to not one but two countries. When we talk about the largest hydropower project in the world, people often cite China's Three Gorges Dam with its installed capacity of 22,500 megawatts, but a much older dam has recently been producing more electricity. In 2014, the Three Gorges Dam held the world record, producing 98.8 million megawatt hours, but at the end of 2016, this dam produced 103 million 98,366 megawatt hours and established a new world record in annual generation. Our generating units are 700 megawatts each. We have 20 generating units uh, installed, which comprise a total of 14,000 megawatts. This monster dam is the Itaipu Dam on the river Parana, bordering Brazil and Paraguay. Itaipu, or the Singing Boulder, as it's known in the local Tupi language, was started back in 1975. A binational project between the Brazilian and Paraguayan governments, it involved altering the course of the mighty Parana River to allow the dam to be built. The project was huge, with record amounts of concrete being used. On one single day, November the 14th, 1978, the site receives 7,207 cubic metres of concrete, a South American record and the equivalent of a 10-storey building every hour. Nothing on this project is small. The main concrete dam houses 20 turbines and the ducts that feed the turbines are 10 metres across and carry up to 700,000 litres of flow water per second. We have a project number of generating in production of 75 terawatt hour per year, but this number is surpassed 
year after year. Uh, the last year we produced 103 terawatt hour. The dam's importance to two countries means that it can never be switched off, a real challenge when trying to maintain such a vital asset. Only two of the 20 generating units can be switched off at any given time. We are only able to produce energy when we have three main aspects fully established. The first one is the safety of the people, the safety of our professionals. The second one is the safety of our, our assets. And the third one is the safety of the environment, the surroundings environment. The Itaipu Dam was first proposed back in the 1970s at the height of the oil crisis. 44 years later, it's the world's largest generator of renewable clean energy and was selected by the American Society of Civil Engineers as one of the seven wonders of the modern world, proving that sustainable energy can be big and reliable. Cecile munch alignet is a professor and head of the research group Hydroelectricity at the University of Applied Sciences and Arts, Western Switzerland, Valais. So Cecile, let's talk a little bit about efficiency, productivity and the price, the cost of producing electricity using hydropower. In hydropower, uh, we are talking about uh, one Swiss francs per watt. So uh, it's an estimation mainly for large hydro. And are you thinking when you talk about one Swiss franc per watt, are you talking about the entire cost of hydropower or not? No, in fact, uh, okay. I'm just talking about the, the machines, the turbines. In the future, when we look to the future of hydropower, how important will pumped storage be? But today, it's uh, the only solution to, to store energy at a large scale. At the beginning, it was uh, mainly to play on the price of electricity. If you have a high price of electricity, you produce with a turbine, and when the price is low, you pump. Uh, nowadays, there is not so much difference in the price of electricity, so we will mainly use this pump storage power plant uh, for the stability of the grid. How much does hydropower work in conjunction with other sustainable energy sources in terms of doing that for the future? Well, in fact, uh, it's, uh, it's a solution. We call it virtual power plants. So uh, you have the, the hydro power plant uh, on the grid. You have also some solar power plant, wind turbines. And all together, you, you try to, to have a production corresponding to the consumption. So it's already a complementary approach to produce electricity to combine hydro with other renewable energies. When you consider everything that goes with hydropower, with the construction, with the concrete and so on, how sustainable really is it as an energy source? So for large hydro, the, the impact uh, can be huge when you, cons when you build uh, a dam on the river or somewhere. So you, you really have to care about this. And, uh, but the hydro power industry in, uh, is working on that to find solutions to uh, mitigate the uh, environmental impact on the ecosystem. When we're thinking about the old dams, how do we use those in the future? Do they need to be dismantled, rebuilt, maintained? Well, in fact, uh, the general approach is to maintain the dam because it will be very expensive to uh, rebuild it. Or, uh, but uh, there is some situation, for instance, in the United States, where they decided to, uh, to destruct the dam, finally, because the impact was uh, too large. Of course, the world's largest dams might be the most famous, but when it comes to hydropower, size isn't everything, especially for communities that are cut off from the grid. We took a trip to the top of the world, literally, to find out how an NGO is helping communities better themselves by the power of, yep, you guessed it, water. Nepal is home to eight of the world's ten tallest mountains and this rocky fortress acts as a barrier to the warmer moist air from the Indian subcontinent, causing the yearly monsoon season. This massive deluge of water can cause misery with landslides and flooding, but when managed properly it can also bring massive benefits. Nepal doesn't have the financial resources or suitable topology to build large dams. Add to that, earthquakes here are commonplace and they threaten to destroy or damage large-scale infrastructure projects. So an alternative has emerged, small-scale hydroelectric power plants. People in Baglung, situated around 275 kilometers west of the capital Kathmandu, have for a long time struggled to find reliable sources of energy. 
That changed though when the NGO Practical Action helped fund, distribute and install small hydropower turbines. The result? Communities that would traditionally have had to use polluting generators are now able to access clean electricity. Nepal is dominantly energy poverty country. Uh, we have been struggling with uh, having adequate electricity at home, as you can see. But with some management change and with some additional hydropower construction, uh, the situation has changed, it has, it has improved. The abundance of water here means the potential to produce clean energy has always existed. But communities weren't able to develop hydropower without the technological know-how and support. We are making sure that the micro hydro projects are running as per their full potential. So we are trying to make sure that it has got adequate uh, productive and social end use, which means during the daytime we can introduce some micro enterprises works. With that, uh, they can enter into different kind of businesses, which can generate employment and that will strengthen their livelihood. Practical action is working with both international and local partners. यो सब बंदा तो हमें जल स्रोत को व्यवस्था रामरू भागो नाले अब जल वाटर ने विद्युत निश्चित ही भागो नाले यो हमले शुरुआत करना खोजे के थे उन पहले देखों ने तो आइले 2050 देखी हमी यो गांव ले उजालो पूरा बत्ती बालने रे उद्योग व्यवसाय करना लाये शुरुआत करेगा हम as a result of this new technology, communities are thriving and crucially, many of the beneficiaries are women and the next generation. अन्य आमी रूले यो उद्योग जा एक अतर साल देखी शुरू करे, एक अतर साल देखी शुरू करे पछि आमी रूले यो सत्र जना को ग्रुप थियो, समूह थियो, सत्र जना को समूह मा दुई जना बॉय नी आरु रूले हम प्रैक्टिकल एक संबात तीन महीना को सिले कते तालिम लिए रा आइले चाहे यही समूह बातें हो आरुले आपने जीवन निर्वाह करने पैसा चाहे नानी बाबू आरुले आई काफी कालम किन्हें पैसा कमाने चाहे वो आरुले सोच ले बैठ रहा था आनी एक जना बॉय नीले कंप्यूटर पर नहीं पढ़ना पायो बॉय नीले कंप्यूटर पढ़े रा उल्ले पानी आइले उनको जीवन and that's why Practical Action is hoping to install similar micro-hydropower projects around the world. Professor, thank you very much for having us here. This is obviously your lab. Tell us a bit about what goes on here. So here uh, we are teaching hydraulic machines to the students and we are also doing uh, research, mainly focusing on small hydro. Okay, so we've got obviously research here. I can see lots of experiments going on looking into the future of hydropower. But tell us a little bit about the history so the history of hydropower start, uh, started a long time ago with uh, the wooden mills uh, in ancient Greece with very uh, small machines, in fact it was 100 watts and uh, then we have a, a, a huge gap during the 70s with the development of uh, hydrodynamics and uh, turbo machinery principles and the first turbine which uh, is called the Fourniron turbine with 5 kilowatts and already a very nice efficiency of almost 80%. Now, talking of innovation, as I said, we've got lots going on here, but tell us a little bit about, there are three types of hydropower, is that right? Yeah, so you have a storage scheme, so you have a reservoir in altitude and then uh, the power plant in the valley, and you can produce when you want. Uh, you have one of the river uh, installation, so uh, as the name uh, is clear, it's <laughs> yeah. on the river, and so the production is really depending on the discharge. And we have also storage, uh, pump storage system, when you can store energy, you can uh, turbine during the day, pump during the night. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using hydropower as a sustainable energy source? But as you said, uh, hydropower is a renewable, sustainable source of energy, so it's really nice compared to other ways to produce electricity. And uh, that's why there is so many installations in the world. And uh, if I have to say about the negative, of course, we are already uh, speaking about the environmental impact. So it's an import important question for hydropower, and we are really, uh, we really care about it. We are doing <laughs> research about it just to improve it. And we're going to be hearing more about that renewable energy source throughout the show, of course. But first of all, if you think you know about hydropower, here's one common misconception. You thought you knew? Think again. Myth. Hydro generators will damage the local ecosystem. The truth? Careful design is required to ensure that hydro systems have minimal impact on the local ecology. This can mean a small amount of energy efficiency compromise, but minimizes the effect on the local environment and, in particular, fish stocks. 
Environment agencies generally require that stream levels must be maintained at a certain level in order to sustain the life within. Since there is no loss of water in the generation process, these requirements can be easily met. Coming up after the break, turbines. What are they? How are they made? And how they are changing? We get access to one of the world's top research facilities into dam design and construction and see how their work is saving lives. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.